All right. Okay, so we, uh, as, as as we've kind of said before, we in the past years we, we've kind of just shot all kinds of videos with like drones and um, kind of random camera angles and stuff. GoPros. Kind of, and yeah. Then, yeah. Pieced it together to make a video, and one of the things we wanted to change this year was. Um, maybe providing a little bit more depth into our videos through vlog style content and um, handheld stuff and make you feel like you're you're actually joining us on the adventures instead of in understanding what we're doing versus just watching our I think really our videos used to just be like our our adventures and our travels but they didn't explain like what we were doing where we were going why right. why are we there we knew what it what all the shots meant or where where we were in every shot but the people that are watching maybe didn't have a clue so um, so our thought was like how can we go ahead and take our videos to the next level I mean to do that it takes a lot of practice because it's a totally different way of shooting going around and talking to a camera holding it so um, so that's certainly gonna take some practice and stuff but one of the things that we we found we were lacking even in that in our last video was transitional things like mm -hmm. when we get somewhere cool like let's just say we get to a cottage or we get to some kind of destination we want to go ahead and showcase that destination by um, maybe doing a little bit of b-roll some slow motion shots and um, different kind of unique angles to kind of really show off the destination that we just got to or the, the journey we we took to get there and it's almost like detail work that you know Sometimes, like, you know, we're, we're showing, like, the bigger landscapes and stuff with, like, just, like, us and stuff. But it's, like, when you get to a place, like, there's super cool, you know, like, little things that maybe you wouldn't notice otherwise. So it's, like, doing B-roll kind of features mm -hmm. the details and stuff of, like, it makes it kind of the reason why you would go to a place like this. So we, last weekend, we thought, okay, well, let's give it a try. And um, so we went out to, it was up towards Huntsville. Yep, we hopped yeah. in the car and headed two hours north, found a snowstorm on the way yeah. up Highway 11. and So when we went up there, um, there was this really cool place that we hiked across the lake in snowshoes. And we we needed the snowshoes. It was it was yeah. pretty deep. It was Kino was sinking elbow deep. Yeah. And so she she actually got smart and started following in Chris's tracks because. Yeah, she was like a duckling walking behind me. So <laughs> um, but yeah, so we walked all the way across the lake and, um, and and got some really good shots along the way, kind of telling the story of us arriving there. Really, it's I guess this the character of the of the clip is actually Nicole because I'm not in any of the shots, but it's showing Nicole getting there, getting out of her car, walking across the lake and arriving at a cabin in the past when we did some of the other videos, I didn't really do much in terms of editing and uh, we use Final Cut Pro, uh, but basically I would just go ahead and adjust maybe some of the exposure levels and, and maybe some of the colors, but now we're shooting in, in Canon Log, so we've got a really flat image and we have to try to bring that up and Nicole's used to doing that with her photography. I'm like, I think there's, it's just like, but learning in Lightroom and learning in Final Cut is like the exact same thing. Like. You're, you're always going to be tweaking your edit and stuff, but I think it's one of those, like, once you learn how to edit, all of a sudden it becomes so much faster. Like, mm -hmm. being a wedding photographer, like, I sometimes take, we take sometimes four or 5,000 images in a full wedding day. Mm -hmm. And now, like, once I get down to the, like, the editing part, sometimes there's only 800 photos to edit. And that, I can do that in a day. Yeah. Like, a full 12-hour day, I can edit that in an hour less, like, depending on how many breaks and social media breaks I take, but... Yeah. It's, I think it just becomes down to practice and it, yeah. it gets faster as like we even record when I was trying to edit the cottage video that we just posted it took me days just to figure out how to edit log footage and to do it properly anyways figure out what the right flow was and then once I figured that out I went ahead and pretty much did all the editing in one day or one evening so um, yeah once you learn your flow then you can you can do it and we're gonna look back on some of the videos that we're creating now and like whoa we should have done this or we could yeah. have done this and it's i think like as you know new things come out like they update final cut they update lightroom and stuff and like obviously like our knowledge base just expands like we're obviously just going to learn more and yeah like i i can tell you like photos from last year that i edited and stuff i'm like oh god how did i how did i do that and like why i wish i could re-edit them and i can re-edit them and that's the thing is like if you want to take that time and the effort mm -hmm. but and if you because if you look back at like our drone first drone video that we did years ago <laughs> and we went up to a cottage and we we're snowmobiling for the weekend and just had got a new phantom uh phantom 3 pro and pulled it out of the box it was really like the first 
five hours or not even like first hour of shooting and we were making a video and you can see it just it's panning up it's all jumping around and stuff you like that you can see the so, blades in the shot yeah, yeah. so it's, it's just like it's really jerky but and it was still a great video and it was just amazing to be seeing that kind of perspective but looking back now uh, with everything that i've learned with many many hours of drone shooting um it's 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 funny to see the amount of uh, change that has occurred over the years so, so that's one of the things that we're um changing all of the all of the shots in this b-roll footage that we just shot was uh, shot by hand and i found that pretty hard to try to like we had to do a lot of retakes because it was really hard to try to keep something really smooth. So we know we need to start using a gimbal and that's what we're going to be doing here. So um, this is something that we're practicing with is just using a gimbal and keeping keeping the, the shots really nice and steady and getting some of those unique perspectives mm -hmm. that maybe you can't get by hand. And so. for those of you that aren't sure which gimbal that is, that is the DJI Ronin S. Um, we're really excited to learn that. and. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of post a video of like comparisons maybe later down the road of the Ronin versus handheld and stuff and really just show like the difference. Or the I'm glide cams. Yeah, I'm really, yeah, our glide cam is awful. We hate that thing. Or maybe you just don't know how to set it up properly. I hate it. <laughs> so. We probably don't know how to set it up, but I still hate it because yeah. it's such a pain to set up. So that's our first crack at um, doing a B-roll sequence. Uh, hopefully you've liked it. Uh, we'd love to hear any thoughts or comments below. Um, and if you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And so you can see some of the new adventures we've got coming up. We've got lots going on this year and we're mm -hmm. really excited to share. So we'll see you in the next video.